horror films are a strange little genre. A vessel of one of the most confusing, outrageous beings around. Films are either tongue-in-cheek or gruesomely depict horrible images, nasty jumps, and ultimately the worst of humanity. It's a wonder this film bracket exists and is seen by anyone, never mind a huge best-selling hit box office every single year. Being scared, the shock of a jump scare, these are not nice feelings. So why do we so actively go out and embrace them? People have spent years researching this. What part of human nature goes out and seeks out the horrible? But I'm not here to explain that today, no. I'm here to explain why what is scary is scary. Different kinds of fear and why horror films are as horrible as they are. Well first let's explain how there are many types of horror. Just like how there are many types of fear. And I ain't talking slasher, slash lost footage, zombies, supernatural films. Nah, those are, those are sub-genres. Fear isn't limited by genre. Fear will and can invade any genre and any medium because it's such a raw, huge emotion that's always been there. And there was some point between Dawn of Man and our rise to the top of the food chain that we stopped running from fear and embellished it as a form of entertainment. Horror cinema being just the latest of many incarnations from folklore to gothic grim tales to phantasmagoria to the haunted house, the thrill of terror coincides with the birth of cinema beautifully. Starting with such films as Nosferatu and, if we're going real way back, The Phantom Ride. In the early usage of film, where there were only theatres, no cinemas or Nickelodeons, film was born, ultimately, in the carnival. The amusement parks, people would sit in a seat and be shown footage of a train in motion, leading the people of then to be amazed. This was new footage. And it was thrilling. Ultimately a gimmick, yes, but revolutionary all the same. The most famous case of this is the arrival of a train at La Saratat. This is a 50 second one shot film of a train pulling into a station, moving directly towards the camera. It was said with terrified audiences, inciting fear, panic and ultimately becoming a film urban legend. This is an interesting notion in itself, but it shows how cinema's origins lie. It was a thrill, it was a gimmick, it was scary. You know, depth, drama, all that comes in later, but first with film, you get the raw, strong emotions. The ones that provoke a reaction. Fear. Laughter. It's all very, very poignant. But when an audience of today looks upon this footage and is told that it's meant to be horror, they would probably laugh. Hell, look at the average horror from the 60s. The 70s, the, the 1990s, not even that long ago, and they've most likely lost the fear factor. See, the general horror film is largely inconsequential and doesn't stand the test of time. This is because audiences are constantly becoming desensitised to horror. You know, the obscene only stays raw and shocking for a short amount of time before it's replaced by something even more obscene. Horror is the closest we have to the origin of cinema today, and that, that's kind of cool but sad. For example, take the most financially successful horror film of last year, uh, the, the Conjuring, did not see. But I can tell you it does indeed look terrifying. Long lasting and timeless? No. See, now that I've done my research, this is a contemporary Hollywood horror. This is modern day's standard of horror. People know what they're going to get, jumps, gothic iconography, and that's exactly what they want. And while it does seem more like a trashy throwaway genre, that's fine. It still do does attract some big directors. Hitchcock made Psycho, Ridley Scott made Alien, Kubrick made The Shining. If there's not something here about the intrinsic feeling of fear, then it wouldn't interact so many big directors. Western cinema relies more on sound. Audio and visual sync creates what we know today as the jump scare. It is the art of anticipation. Whereas Eastern horror alternatively earns its scares in different ways. It relies less on visual, some are deemed cheap jump scares, and it moulds into the physiological mind. Their horror stereotypically revolves around the religious, the folkloric, and the repressed. Ringu, for example, Ring. Ring is a Japanese horror released in 1998 directed by Hideo Nakata. 
It's a film about supernatural curse of a vengeful spirit manifesting itself within a videotape. Now why is this regarded as a foreign classic? Its summary and content is nothing revolutionary to be so renowned and spawn a world of sequels and other films trying to in imitate its style. On paper, this storyline is not remotely scary, however the metallic screeching non-diegetic sound, the exposure of the mystery and the other worldliness that comes from the folkloric gives the film its intense edge. It's about a story being told, not the story, if that makes sense. In Japanese culture, there is a recurring theme of a yurei, the image of a spiritual, vengeful female, usually with long black hair and a white dress. This is literally the iconic image that this film translates into cinema. These cultural codes are lost on us in the West, making these films kind of hard to sell nationally, as it dissipates American horror conventions. But the fear of the ominous and the unknown is a universal language, and somehow, Ring works. Whether the original or the 2012 American remake, the image of a girl creeping out of a TV has become iconic. Why is this? Well, the yurei is a perfect example of the unnatural, as a combination of both supernatural, the ancient and the technological, the ghost Sadako is clearly not meant for this world. The TV is the portal in the present day, and it creates an indescribable feeling of wrong that deeply just disturbs audiences, rather than making them jump out of their seats. It's a subtler kind of horror, and it can be just as effective. The real interesting aspect of this film though is why it is scary. The answer is in the psychological. The repressed comes through spirits or other archetypes of existing social law. The long forgotten past has different cultural implications. Sadako is the embodiment of her, and the psychological too is an unknown terrifying thing. The archetype of Yurei is a symbol of evil and femininity, much like the film noir film Femme Fatale. The creation of this was caused by social fear, fear of women, and as they showed signs of independency and uprising. Combine that with the cliche of a hole in the ground and you have one hella recurring motif of a female fear complex. Unlike American releases, it scares not by holding their hand and guiding the audience around a haunted house before pushing them into a scary thing, boo, but by deserting them, by making them unnerved, unsettled, and lost. The haunted house here is a maze. Ring is a film about fear, and is an example of how we project our fears of society into film, whether it be the technological, unknown, or the feminine. It's all fear. If you're wondering about more examples of horror that you can achieve without needing to resort to jump scares, then there's many. People sometimes forget that you can create an equal amount of tension just with the right performance. Silence of the Lambs, for example. Proof you sometimes don't need camera tricks, editing, or audio. The fear in this iconic scene comes from the fact that the film voyeur nature of cinema is thrown away. Horror is satisfying because despite the primal scared instincts you're feeling, you know that in a cinema you're totally safe. But what if just for one scene, you won? This, Twin Peaks and various other performances allow that. Audiences are more aware of film conventions than they may think. And so when they're stripped of these safe little film barriers, Things get real personal and scary. Breaking the fourth wall while making a direct connection can be strikingly effective, if rarely done. Techniques like jumps are not an entirely bad thing. They create instant insecurity, for example. You're always be wondering, well, is, is, is the next jump coming? Should I be scared? I'm on edge. But regardless, there are films that know how to balance the two, and being able to separate tone and substance. And jump scares, if used lightly, can create tone, or they can be the entire body of your film. Regardless of what technique you do, all of these guys understand what scares people, ultimately. Horror is invasive. It invades our senses, and all of this finally brings us to Ridley Scott's Alien. Why? Well, Alien is the definition of invasion. Never has a film so intrinsically attacked its viewer. Horror isn't complicated. You find out what makes your audience uncomfortable and present it to them in the most unsettling way possible. This is why horror films aimed at young males contain vague allusions to homosexuality. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, these are all films 
catering to a violent demographic. You're gonna get killed in these. That's the fear. There's a bit of paranoia in there. But alien. Aliens about rape. We'll let alien screenwriter Dan O'Bannon spell it out himself. One thing that people are just all disturbed about is sex. I said, that's how I'm going to attack the audience. I'm going to attack them sexually. And I'm not going to go after the women in the audience. I'm going to attack the men. I'm going to put in every image I can think of to make the men in the audience cross their legs. Homosexual oral rape, birth, the thing that lays its eggs down your throat, the whole number. And once you see it, <laughs> you can't unsee it. I've spoken about phallic imagery before, oh my god, look at Alien and Prometheus. Geiger designed for Alien, the derelict ship and its captain, and the alien landscape, and every last bit of it is loaded with gigantic penises and galactic space vaginas. Not even subtle. None of the sexual imagery in Alien is unintentional. For example, in the picture above the human crew members are invading the alien ship, so in effect those are man-sized sperm crawling through it. From here, John Hurt's character, Kane, plums the depths of the ship's womb to find an endless escape of eggs, which if you're paying attention to the whole sperm analogy, makes a whole lot of biological sense. And then there's the man rape. This speaks for itself. I'm sorry, there is nothing that could not be sexual about this scene. The alien's life cycle is modelled after that of many parasitic wasps. The event is explosive, bloody and painful, utterly ruining the body it came from. And look at that. That alien, that alien is a dick. I'm sorry. The adult alien's head looks phallic as fuck. An erection comes out of his mouth. I'm shouting this in my room, I probably shouldn't be doing that. I don't know if you've noticed from all this, but all the films we've studied, and all the films of late, bar alien. In fact, no, that's the 70s actually. All modern horror films are about us. Humans are real monsters, but no, actually. Serial killers, ghosts, vengeances, your aim. These are all us. These are all about the human condition. You would be hard pressed to name three films that have come out in modern times that have an actual monster. Chucky doesn't count, ghosts don't count, they are humans. Only one I can think of off the top of my head is Insidious joking about, he's a joker. Why is this? Well, when it comes down to it, as I said earlier, we've all become desensitised to horror. The scary monster under the bed doesn't work for us anymore. Humanity's fears these days are the unknown. We think we know so much about our world, our society, ourselves, our bodies, and we don't know anything about the psychoanalytical. It's, the psychological is a scary unknown being. People are the scary thing now. The horror films have grown to reflect that. It's a depressing message, it's a sad message, but it's much, much scarier. Talking about horror.